I've been stabbed. Look, I had my vaccine this morning. I had the Pfizer vaccine. The first dose. And yeah, if you're wondering about side effects, well, <clears throat> I haven't had any. Apart from like a very small sort of bruised feeling where they stuck the needle in, I feel fine. In fact, I feel bloody fantastic. Like I've flipping been given Pfizer powers. Like, <laughs> so I thought today I'll treat myself and I'm gonna make a fish finger sandwich. Now, if you're British, you know exactly what one of these is. Again, does that make sense? You know exactly what a moron. But if you're not, it's kind of like, well, it's basically what it says it is. It's fish fingers, which I think in America you call them fish sticks. Uh, sandwich between two slices of bread, bit of tartar sauce, bang in. Great little snack, great little treat, especially when you're pissed. Now, usually we just buy a box of frozen fish fingers, fry them up, stick them in the bread. And you can do that, you know, you can buy those fish fingers. I'm not gonna name the brand, but we all know the flipping weird fisherman that hangs around with kids too much. Fish fingers. But we're gonna bougie it up. We're gonna make our own fish fingers, make our own tartar sauce. I'm not making my own bread, I ain't going that far. But before we do, remember to do the usual thing, like, share and subscribe. Please, there's not enough of you that are hitting that subscribe button. Make sure you click the bell icon as well, allow notifications, so every time I upload, YouTube tells you about it. Hey, Mugs, guess what? I've got some fresh fish here. We'll give him some of the scrappy ends. He'll love that. So let's go, let's make this fish finger sandwich. Come on. Right, so I've got my fish here, which is where Adam has made a mistake. I thought I'd bought two cod loins. Turns out it's haddock. It's no bother, you can use either. But anyway, what I'm gonna do is get it out of its packet, get them onto a plate, and I'm just gonna lightly salt them, just a little bit. What this does is it kind of draws out some of the excess moisture, so you get a slightly firmer texture. You don't want them too wet. Turn it over, a bit more salt. And then I'm just gonna stick those in the fridge for about 15, 20 minutes. And whilst in the fridge, we can get on and make the tartar sauce. Right, okay, so we're gonna make our own tartar sauce. Yes, you can buy the stuff in a jar, but making your own means you can show off a bit. And also it tastes better. It's fresher, it's cleaner, it's just got a better flavor. So we're gonna start off with some mayo. Now you can use ordinary mayo, that's fine. But I honestly recommend this stuff. It's called Kewpie mayo, Japanese mayo. It's brilliant, it's life-changing, life-changing. If you think Hellman's was good, this is gonna knock your socks off. We want about four tablespoons of this. One, one. And I have the juice of about a quarter of a lemon. Get that in there. You can always add a bit more acidity if you want. And I want about a tablespoon's worth of gherkins. Well, these are cornichons actually, but they will still do the job fine. Or if you're in America, dill pickles. And you want to chop those up into small dices. Okay, get those in. And you want about the same amount of capers. Oh, these are flipping all the way up to the top with water. Drain some of them off. And these add like a nice saltiness. Can't get the flipping spoon in. And just kind of roughly chop those up just to kind of get them a bit smaller. That'll do. See? See how easy this is? And some parsley. About two tablespoons worth. Give it a good old chop. And in with the parsley. Usually, I add dill to my tartar sauce, but I ain't got any fresh in the shop. So what I've gone for instead is some dried tarragon. I could use dried dill, but dried dill isn't that great, to be honest. But dried tarragon is fine. And because it's quite a strong herb, I'm just gonna kind of take it easy to start with. Probably, I'd say about half a teaspoon, maybe a touch more, about a teaspoon. A little twist of salt, not too much salt because capers are salty, and also some pepper. And then just mix it up. And there we go, there's our tartar sauce. That's gonna sit in the fridge, because the longer you leave it, the more the kind of flavors are gonna meld together and be extra delicious. And I'm about 10 minutes before the fish is ready. Uh, so I'm gonna kind of sit down and relax for 10 minutes. And I'll see you in a bit. Okay, right, so I've got my fish out of the fridge. And what I'm gonna do is just dab off any of that excess moisture that's released. 
Now what we're going to do is cut them into our fish finger shapes. So what I'm going to do is first tidy them up a bit so that they're all kind of roughly the same sort of size. Trim. Don't worry Mog, you'll get some of this fish. Now it's really important the way you cut the fish. Don't cut it along that way. Make sure you cut it the length of the fillet. Okay, not that way. Because if you do it that way, it's going to fall apart. So I'm going to cut these into nice chunky goujons. So that sort of size. And that bit's for Mogs. Yeah, oh he's flipping his ear already. I'll get at you in a minute. Okay, I'll get at you in a minute. Okay, now we need to bread these and get them in the pan. Right, so I've got my breading station all set up. Got fish, got the eggs, got some plain flour. And use just ordinary standard, bog standard breadcrumbs. Don't use panko for this because it's not going to cling to the fish as much and you know you won't get a nice crust. So just your ordinary standard issue breadcrumbs are going to be fine. Uh, and I'm going to season up this flour just with a bit of salt and pepper. And I'm going to add just a little bit to the eggs as well. You've seen me do this before but basically what it's doing is if you were to make scrambled eggs I'd always advise you to add the salt just before it's finished cooking because what salt does is it breaks down the white okay which makes it runny and in this case that's what we want because we don't want the egg all gloopy so by adding a pinch of salt it's going to break down that white and it's just going to become a bit more runny a bit more manageable top tip full of them on this channel and this step is entirely optional but I am going to sprinkle my haddock fillets with just a little bit of old bay just gives it a nice bit of kick man nice bit of spice in fact auntie Brenda sent me this a few years ago Old Bay still got it. It's probably flipping out of date now, but it's still good. And then we just do the usual thing. Okay, we're gonna flour, egg, 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 egg and breadcrumb. So in with our first fillet, into the flour, shake off the ex excess, <laughs> excess. Shake off the excess. Okay, and then into our egg mix, and then into the breadcrumbs. Make sure you dab the ends as well. Get it nicely coated. And congratulations, you've just made your first fish finger. Now do the rest. Let's see what Muggs thinks of this fish. I have washed off all that salt as well, so don't worry. Come on then Muggs, go and have a taste. Tell us what you think. You missed a bit. Don't think you liked that, did you? There's no more. What did you think? Tell your viewers. Bless him. It's no more, buddy. Sorry. It's no more. Okay, so we are now ready to fry these puppies up. There's our wonderful array of fish fingers. There we are. Got eight in the end. And we're going to shallow fry them. So I've got my pan here. And I'm going to go in with some oil. I'd say about a centimetre two centimetres deep, something like that. And I'm gonna get that onto a sort of medium heat. Be careful it's not too hot because you'll burn the breadcrumbs before the fish has finished cooking. Okay, I think that oil is hot enough. So go with our fish fingers. And they won't take long to cook at all. Probably what, uh, three to four minutes each side. And you'll know when they're ready because they'll start to hiss and crackle and pop. That's the rice crispies, isn't it? That's the sound of the water coming out the fish. Once you start hearing that, you know, you're golden. There we go. Right, these puppies are ready. So let's get them out. I'm gonna stick them on this bit of kitchen paper. Just drain off that excess oil. Then we can make a sandwich. Bread. Now, I wouldn't recommend using some artisanal flipping sourdough, three day risen stuff. All right, you just want your plain old white bread loaf. You want that nice sort of pillow soft bread. Just gonna take the knobby end off. Uh, you don't wanna go too thick, but you don't wanna go too thin either, because it won't be stable, it'll fall apart. I'll go back that sort of thickness is fine. Now this might be controversial, I don't know. All right, some people use butter, some people don't. I always add butter just because that's how I've always done it. Then I'm gonna add just a thin layer of tartar sauce. Just a small smattering. And then on with our fish fingers. Now, obviously I'm not gonna use all of these, so I need to be a bit strategic <laughs> as to how I kind of place these. I'll go for the longer ones, so they fit nicely. Shall I go in with a 
couple more. Yeah, why not? And of course, some more of our tartar sauce. You know this is gonna be messy, don't you? You just know, you, you just know. Okay, on with the lid. And there you have, folks, a fish finger sandwich, a posh one. Let's get it eaten. This is about to get messy, isn't it? I can already tell, but you know, that's the messy things are the best things in life, aren't they? Well, let's go for a bite. Oh, if someone made you this, you'd marry them. Yes, it's messy, but my God. Fish is nice and flaky, nice and moist. And that tartar sauce with that tarragon. Well, we all know tarragon goes really well with fish. That is a next level fish finger sandwich. You don't have to have them in a sandwich. Once you've breaded them, you can stick them in the freezer. Kids are gonna love them, proper school dinner, fish fingers, chips and beans. But anyway, I'm gonna love Anivia. So there we go, that's how to make a fish finger sandwich. If you enjoyed the video, do the usual, like, share and subscribe. <sighs> it's flipping baking hot, isn't it, today? I don't deal well with heat, just flipping leak. But anyway, I'll see your gorgeous faces in the next video. Bye for now. Mm.